Hello, we're Molly Mish. After 10 years exploring all there is to see in US, Canada, and Mexico, we built a camper out of a four-wheel drive Mercedes Sprinter van and headed across the pond to continue our journeys in Europe. After enduring year-long self-imposed isolation in Croatia during the height of the pandemic, we are ready to resume our European adventures. This summer, we're headed to the Irish and British Isles, starting with the Republic of Ireland. Join us as we explore and discover the magic of the Emerald Isle. Lost it into the depths. We lost the plum. Look how fast the clouds are moving. It's raining over there. That's the rain that just came through us. There could be some rain coming our way right now. Toby? This is not the ideal place for you to run loose. Sorry, even though there's not that many people here. And it's like somebody's Big vacation home over here too. The gates are just open. I don't know what's going on. This is called Oyster Oyster Bed Pier. But look at this man. That's medieval. One thing cool about this place is uh there's a water spigot here. So we were able to top off water the whole time we were here, which is only I don't know, less than 24 hours because we're leaving today. There's really not a lot for us to do here, even though this place is cool. This is uh, part of the famous Ring of Kerry. We're on the Kerry Peninsula. Pretty popular place. Yesterday there were just a lot of people driving all over these narrow roads. And here it would have been cool if uh, the weather was nicer so we can go swimming. You can climb up right here. Somebody did come yesterday in the rain, in the windy coldness, and went swimming. We're gonna get out of here and keep on driving around the Kerry Peninsula. Side. But here we are in the Kerry Peninsula on the Wild Atlantic Way. There's a uh, Scarif Island out there, Deanish Island to the left. Probably one of the most scenic places on the Ring of Kerry. trips on the Force Awakens passenger vessel. Well, they named their boat Force Awakens from right here, from Ball and Skellig Pier. Well, we're not going to be camping here in this parking lot. But that's okay. We're just going to take a walk because we kind of want to go see a few things today while we're driving around the Ring of Kerry. Hopefully we'll get to see one of the islands from a distance in the uh, this road just uh, around the corner here. It'll be probably the closest spot we will be to Skellig Michael, the island where Force Awakens and The Last Jedi was shot. In fact, they didn't shoot a lot of the monastery scenes on the island. They, uh, they built a replica basically on the mainland of Ireland and I also know where that is, but unfortunately none of those 
structures are there anymore. But at least we can go to the same spot, or at least come close to going to the same spot. Can you walk out to that castle though easily, I wonder? Here is the Skellig Abbey, pretty much just uh, walls, some doorways, looks like it's in even worse shape than the rock of Cashel that we went to about a week ago now. There's a graveyard here, just like at rock of Cashel. A lot of these graves look really, really old. They just look like rocks that are loose in the ground anymore. I don't even know if some of these are headstones or just rocks that people put there. But how are these still standing? That's just, that's just a regular old stone. Yeah, this one, 2018, three years ago. So if it's the same as what we learned at the Rock of Cashel, that you have to be a resident, maybe even a parishioner of this church. I'm sure they moved the new church now to a different location. But to be buried in the graveyard of the church grounds you have to be a parishioner, and I think at the Rock of Casho, anyways, there was a cutoff point where people were no longer qualified because they they're, they just simply run out of room. Anybody who was born after a certain point don't have the rights to be buried here anymore. So they will eventually only have old headstones and graveyards, burials. That's that's just right for you. If you grow any more, you're not gonna be able to walk through this. To one of the tones. So it sounds like this was never a church or anything at all. This was just what they call the domestic structure for the monks. And it maybe it just eventually became a graveyard for the community. But this is one of the few remaining buildings that are still somewhat standing, dating back to the fifth century, I think, what it said, to make this. 1600 years old. It's pretty crazy. Okay. Imagine going there in a oh, boat right now. Right. Skellig, oh, Michael yeah. in the back. The Little boat. Skellig in the front. Right there in the back is where the uh, Skellig monks built their monastery in the in the top top right corner. That's where the famous beehive huts are. On the side of this road, it's pretty. Uh, Pretty windy, narrow road. Not one way, by the way. This goes both ways. And we're on this, like, corner. It is really windy out there. We did go outside. And you can't have two doors open at the same time. Under these conditions, somebody will get slammed and chopped in half in one of the doors. We're going to see if you can see if there's a better view of it as we keep driving. This is St. Finian's Bay. First place where we've seen some decent sized waves. There's some waves you can catch, but it's rocky. So you gotta be uh, 
Over there, there's just people catching shore break. A lot of people out here. All right, it's really windy. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear me. I hope you can, but, but we paid. Total tourist attraction here. This is the Cary Cliffs. Supposedly, it's many people's highlight of the Ring of Cary. So, we paid. They wanted four euros a person, about five bucks a person. But uh, for our family of five, we pay 16 euros. So, however the numbers work out, we got one person for free. And it's about a 10 minute walk from the parking lot. It is uh, nothing except for standing on the edge of the cliffs behind some guardrails looking down. And I'm hoping uh, it's worth the 16 euros. We shall find out. It's supposed to be pretty epic. And I think we'll be able to see Skellig Michael from here again. Replica beehive huts. Yeah. Well, supposedly the inside of the real ones are square or rectangular. Really? I guess I didn't just didn't. Yeah. No. Ooh, smells like pee in here. I'm not. I'm out. <laughs> here are the replicas of the beehive huts, like the ones at the Skellig Monastery up on Skellig Michael. The birds are fake, though. I mean, the beehive is a replica too. So they're sort of fake. That's pretty cool. best view in the Ring of Kerry. I think it's worth it. What do you think, Mila? Sure. No. Luca says no. It was very, very windy. It was a, it was a one-of-a-kind experience. That's why they could charge money. Yeah, I can see the money that you pay to come here. It goes towards maintenance of the fence, yeah. safety measures, like that maintaining the road maintaining the gravel i almost feel like you want to come here when it's windy so you get the whole experience because that is that is what formed these cliffs wind and waves it's so bad. 